Let's learn about diffusion models. Diffusion models are a fairly new innovation in the world of deep learning. They are generative models that are being used in many different domains like audio generation or image generation. You might have heard of them with their use in DALI or Imogen, for example. Diffusion models can be used standalone like they did with Glide, or it can be used as part of a bigger and more complex model like it was done with DALI 2 very recently. Their inner workings are quite complex, so it could get a little bit confusing to understand how they work and how they are trained. That's why in this video, we are going to approach it step by step and explain diffusion models in five varying levels of difficulty, starting from the easiest one to the more complex one. Level one. Diffusion models were inspired by non-equilibrium thermodynamics from physics and as you can understand from the name, this field deals with systems that are not in thermodynamic equilibrium. For example, a drop of paint in a glass of water. The density of the paint after you just dropped it is very high in one spot and zero in other parts of the water. By the laws of physics, the drop will diffuse into the water until it reaches an equilibrium. In the physical world, reversing this diffusion process is simply not possible. But with diffusion models, the goal is to learn a model that can reverse this process and bring the drop of paint to its original state. In other words, the drop being in one spot includes some information. And as the diffusion process progresses, we lose information. In our case, this information equals to clear images. So working backwards from this diffuse paint is equivalent to working backwards to a proper image. Level two, diffusion models work by replicating this diffusion process by adding noise to original images and later learning how to reverse this noise process. The noise is applied to the images following a Markov chain. What is a Markov chain? A Markov chain is a chain of events where the current time step only depends on the previous time step. So that means there are no cross dependencies between time steps that do not immediately follow each other. And this assumption of Markov chains makes it tractable for the noise adding to be reversed later. So at the end, a diffusion model is a Markov chain where in each time step, we add a little bit of noise to our image until the image only consists of noise and later learning how to reverse this noise adding process. After it is trained, given only noise, this model is able to generate high resolution images. Level three. So now that we understand what diffusion models do is basically add noise to an image, let's understand what it means to add noise to an image. There are many different types of noise and the noise that is added in diffusion models is called the Gaussian noise. What is Gaussian noise? It is a noise that has the probability distribution of a Gaussian or normal distribution. Given the different mean and variation values for this noise, the location and the width of the distribution can change, but the bell shape will stay the same. Adding Gaussian noise to an image means changing the values of the pixels of that image slightly in the area of the probability distribution. Let's look at an example. Let's say for simplicity, we have a two pixel image. X-axis shows us the value of pixel one, Y-axis shows us the value of pixel two, and the Z-axis gives us the probability distribution. If the values of our original image's pixels are 120 and 90 out of uh, zero to 255, our images will live in this point. If we want to apply Gaussian noise to this image, we can draw the Gaussian probability distribution where the mean is and the variance is determined by a constant. Let's say for now that it is 10. That means to add noise, we select a random position inside this distribution. It could be anywhere, really close to the original point, really far from the original point or somewhere in between. The probability distribution tells us that this new point being closer to the original point is higher than it being further away from it. So let's say if this point is selected randomly, then the image in the next step of our Markov chain will look like this. And effectively, we will have added Gaussian noise to our image. This is an example where the image only has two pixels, but of course that does not really reflect reality. Normally images have many more pixels. And when that happens, this graph will have many more dimensions. Diffusion models add noise to the image in this way until it becomes nothing 
but noise. This is done by adding just a little bit of noise for hundreds or even thousands of times. So at the end, we have a hundreds or thousands long Markov chain. Level four, we learned what it means to add the noise, but what does it mean to reverse or remove this noise? Reversing or removing the noise means recovering the values of these pixels so that the resulting image will resemble the original image. In diffusion models, this is achieved by using neural networks. So let's look at our two pixel example again. Let's say this is where the image lives and this is the point, it is fully noise. During the forward diffusion process, the image follows a path from the original position to Gaussian noise position. During the reverse diffusion, we want to find a way to bring it back to its original position. To do that, we input the image to a convolutional neural network and we ask the network to produce the image in the previous step. The type of convolutional network used in the original paper is called a unit. It is called that because of its shape. Through the convolutions, it makes a small representation of the image and then upsamples it back to the original dimensions. This way, the input and output dimensions of the network has the same size. Okay, that was a lot of information. I hope you were able to follow along. I based this video on this amazing article made by my colleague Ryan O'Connor in the Assembly AI team. And on top of everything we learned here today, the article goes deeper into the math behind diffusion models. You can find the link to the article in the description. If you have any questions about how diffusion models work, don't forget to leave them in the comment section below. And if you like this video, I would really appreciate it if you give it a like and subscribe to our channel to be one of the first people to know when we publish a new video. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.